Evaluate the integral of sine of the cube root of x dx using the indicated w substitution, w equals the cube root of x. Now, let's prep this first. This is the integral of sine of the expression x to the 1 3rd dx. Now let's set up the substitution that they gave us. So w is equal to x to the 1 3rd power. If we differentiate this, dw dx is equal to 1 3rd x to the minus 2 thirds. So we can multiply both sides by dx, multiply both sides by 3 to get 3 dw is equal to x to the minus 2 thirds dx. Does this differential fit? Well, you've got the dx bit here, but the x to the 2 thirds power doesn't work. That's going to lead us to say that this substitution doesn't fit. Well, if the problem asks us to use it, we're going to force the substitution rather than fit it. So to force a substitution, let's go back up to the first step, but solve it for x. That's going to get us w cubed is equal to x. Or if you'd like, x is w cubed. We're going to switch the roles of x and y. So now let's continue the process the way we normally would. The derivative of x, dx dw, is going to be 3w squared. So we multiply both sides by w, we get dx is equal to 3w squared dw. And this becomes the new differential to fit. But dx always fits. So let's see. We'll replace dx with the more complicated expression, 3w squared dw. That's the forcing part. This can be replaced with a w, so we have sine of w. And here's our new integral. If we clean this up a little bit, this becomes the integral of 3w squared times the sine of w dw. This is the result of forcing a substitution. We made it more complicated than it was before. So how do we attack this new guy? Well, notice that this new guy is a product of an algebraic function and a trigonometric function. So integration by parts would be the way to go. We'll let u be the algebraic function, dv be the trigonometric function, and we'll start building tables. So we differentiate once to get 6w, integrate once to get negative cosine of w. Differentiate twice to get a 6, integrate twice to get a negative sine of w. Differentiate again to get a 0, integrate again to get a negative negative cosine of w. And since we have a 0, we'll call it quits. So we'll put in our tables, our arrows, plus minus plus minus the integral. And let's read off the answer. We'll have positive 3w squared times negative cosine of w from the first arrow. Uh, then we're going to have negative 6w times negative sine of w from the second arrow, then positive 6 times cosine of w from the third arrow, and negative the integral of 0. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, negative the integral of 0 times some stuff. So if we clean this up, we're going to have negative 3w squared times the cosine of w, a negative negative 6w sine w, a positive 6 cosine of w, and then the antiderivative of 0 is a constant. Eh, plus or minus, it doesn't really matter. Let's go and clean this up and back substitute up here. So if we back substitute with w, we're going to have negative 3x to the 1 3rd quantity squared, that's our w, times the cosine of x to the 1 3rd, plus 6 times x to the 1 3rd times the sine of x to the 1 3rd, plus 6 times the cosine of x to the 1 3rd, and then again, our integration constant, plus or minus, doesn't matter. Uh, let's clean this up one more time. We have minus 3x to the 2 thirds times the cosine of x to the 1 third, plus 6 times x to the 1 third times the sine of x to the 1 third, plus 6 times the cosine of x to the 1 third, plus the integration constant. And that monstrosity is our antiderivative. Hoo-hoo-wee.